Hello everybody, welcome to another video. This one today is gonna be kind of in 3D Max. I was trying to think of a way to explain how to do like parking curves and I know it doesn't seem like anything fancy but if you're doing any architectural stuff, this right here is pretty basic. If you're in a hurry and you need another one copied over, you can duplicate this but most of the time they don't mirror copy over the same so if I drag this over I'm gonna go inside of the main spline and I'll show you my example so I copied this over but at the same time I can actually remove some stuff here and modify this to copy over that so what is, what does that mean like how is this working and what is it doing? I'm using a reference spline and this is my main controlling point here. So say for instance, I created, let's see, we can drag this over to another one or I connect another spline to this. If I did this and as long as it's connected, it should work as I attach it. In doing this, what you want to do is keep it connected but at the same time you want it to not be um, opened because it won't close off this is only for closed uh, curves but this is an extreme example the other thing is that I'll need this to be at the same level as this I could do it at zero but I had trouble grabbing it between all the other layers and I'll show you how I break it down but if I were to attach this spline go to attach it should create a new one whenever you have a parking lot as this example goes I'll, I'll remove these two I grabbed one online and this is kind of like the template and it was just trying to explain how to get when you're in a deadline you're trying to get these curves built and you don't want to have to build each one one by one and you've already did one so Say for instance, this is do really fast and you had to do this. I'll grab this spline and we'll make that transparent. So this spline, let's make it a different color so we can see it a little bit better. Make it red. And you can see that this shape is the next part in there. And parking lots are always unique and different. I'm just dragging this over. Not an instance. You want it to be part of the main spline. So I'm going to grab this and move it. So we'll select all the vertices. And you want it to be a part of this main one right here. So now we can go back in and refine this model to how we need it to be. So we'll remove these little points and I need that one. And as you can see, it's fairly quick. If I were to look at the image below, it needs to be cornered. So we'll take off this point make this a corner make this a corner and just drag into place so this kind of helps getting a fairly quick process going corner these off too so that we can refine it as we need so that they don't pinch sometimes what I'll do is go up here and just adjust the ends to about smooth it out a little bit so you have some rounded off corners for that and that was fairly quick and easy so this this process helps for whenever you have a big parking lot and you want to kind of populate it fairly quick with uh, curves and everything because once you're going, you would have to build out each piece, copy it, 
duplicate that and make a model for each one. But since I'm just grabbing the main one, you really don't have to worry about much much else besides that. I can grab this. This can be one of those other ones that connects. Connect these two vertices right here. And we can actually delete them to clean it up. So now you have these little middle parts for your parking lot. It might not work for the edge, but for the inside of your parking lot, this will kind of speed up a little bit. Little things here and there that you're trying to get across and you want to spend too much time and you know just grab your little straps and copy those back over. Most of the time these are very painless. Keep those an in instance. So how did I build this? Okay. It starts with this main spline right here. So let's go ahead and build this from scratch. I'm gonna make a rectangle and this is a fairly basic version of it but we want to create this curve the curve is mimicking this main one right here it has its own but if you look this is reference so this is where references come in uh, a lot of times references you change the main one and then the other ones fall it's like a parent child thing so this will be your main one we're gonna copy this but when we copy it, you have instance or you have reference. We're going to go to reference and we'll name this curve. In doing so, you actually divided it from here. So we're going to put a sweep modifier. The sweep modifier, and this can be used on other things too. You can use this probably for walls and doing uh, trim. So it doesn't always apply to just this. So if I were to do a box, you can actually is that now you got walls so you can use this for walls and if you have a the trim at the bottom and the trim at the top you can use this reference to actually do that I might do a separate video to kind of show how this can be used in other uh, things but for this this one I'm, I'm want to keep it pretty simple so we'll keep it at the default and knock this back down to its level so what I used is the, the half round. The half round works. Not full round, it's the quarter round, my mistake. So that's what I use for this. So say for instance you're gonna do some other ones that have the actual lip on it, you can do that. And that's what I like about the sweep. We're gonna do, let's do a profile rectangle and this will be there and there we'll just kind of average it out and that one could be bigger kind of give you an idea for scale so if you really wanted to we can actually do a sweep with it a version with the lip so corner and we're going to offset this we can offset it about four we can offset it even after it's done so we we'll find this just remember where you put this so that you can find it again we'll make this kind of come up just a little bit kind of give it some character this right here we'll smooth it off we'll add about four on the edge and see how this looks you have your steps we can up this and this will actually affect this part so if you want you can go into use custom selection select this and we'll pick a selection and now we have custom selection if you want you can offset this up so what does this do this actually creates this profile to mimic this so we'll turn off banking. We want to create um, mapping coordinates just in case you want to do some extra detail. I usually turn off the smoothing so it doesn't get the edges. 
you turn it on it kind of breaks that or off it breaks it so you can see it has a lip here so let's go ahead and put a material onto this curve back in here so we can have a color and now you can actually see that I can modify this and if you really want to you can just adjust different points of this model so now this is telling this what to do that's pretty good because if you want to you can actually have this in and out as you need the other thing that I made was the grass. So doing that, we're gonna grab the main spline and then you can see right here why I kind of dropped this main spline down a little so I can grab it a little bit easier. Anything that you do to the spline, and we can keep it a rect rectangle or we can do a edit spline. Onto this and we can actually move this around. The good thing about doing this is if you have any grading that you can actually um, move this geometry up and down. So if you have to move it slightly at all, and if you have to, you could actually put a quadrify mesh on this and that'll actually keep the, your polygons from distorting too much, but that'll be a little bit later. For this, let's grab the main spline and we will duplicate that again, but as a reference, and this will be grass. And then you can move your grass as you need into the parking inner circle. So now, do edit poly to solidify that. We can apply the grass texture or color for this example. And if you need, you can actually make it grass from V-Ray Fur or whatever you have. You can apply texture to this and do displacement and whatever else. There's different methods, but going into to this model, you can now modify it as needed. So we can change these edges. Or we can up them like, let's do that a little bit more interactive like this. The other thing is that you now have control over that spline. So if you need to, you can move this over back and forth. So we'll collapse it to this. Yes. Let's see if that didn't break it. Okay, you didn't break it at all. So what I need is extra steps inside of my mesh. The other thing is that you can modify each piece of this. So, given that you have this, you can actually modify this part and, you know, you get a generated mapping coordinates. So if you try to unwrap this, you can actually put seams with stripes and other things and you can get a good unwrap. And that's something else that I'll probably dive into later. I wanted this video to kind of be short and nothing too long, but I just wanted to show an example of if you're doing parking lots and you need to do them fairly quick, can't really go wrong with this. You you could <laughs> you can grab your spline, you can offset it, you can shrink it back down, and there you go. You got a weird looking little corner part, but this makes it a little bit quicker for you to get the parking lot built faster. If you were to look at this model or this reference, you could probably use some of it for these little pieces here, but since they close into the other thing, it might not work as good. But for this example, it, it seems to work fairly well for the inner parts of this uh, model. So as long as your models are closed and if you have a fairly big parking lot you need to do this really quick, like I said, we can just grab some of this 
I don't have a method for the um, striping yet, but there's always a way. And then you can get this going, and then you're going a different way. And you can tell once you start getting your striping in, you're gonna you'll be okay. And then going in here. This usually helps a lot whenever you're on a deadline. If you're if you're trying to do something fairly big, and most of the time, if you have a big parking lot, it's a, usually a lot of this, <laughs> and then filling it up with cars is the next step. But hopefully, this kind of gives you an idea of what you can do with this. And as you do it, you actually got grass too. So if I rendered this, do a little short render, not from that viewport. Thank you, Max. so you can kind of see what's going on so this is one example of getting you know your parking lot uh, fairly quick I didn't want to make a too long of a video I just kind of wanted to jump into max for anybody who's doing any architectural or site kind of um, designs and stuff like that this is fairly quick um, and easy to use. Um, you can also use this in, in, like I said, walls for the upper molding and lower molding. And if you have anything kind of specific for the sides, uh, for, for the trim, you could do that. Just kind of think on what you can build on this. And if you have any, like, you know, ideas, put them in the comments and let everybody else know. So, um, you can grow from this idea of using uh, one spline to create more splines or more variations to make it almost a modular fairly quick way to do something but that's most of this video for today I didn't really want to do uh, anything crazy it's just something I've been wanting to show um, that I use a method with this method and I love how fast you can modify things in here Ordered off. And there you go. All you need are some trees and some cars, and just uh, put a building in there, and then you're kind of on your way. But for when you're in a crunch or a deadline, this this really helps. So, hope this helped. Uh, thank you for watching, and hopefully, it posts up a new video soon. Thank you.